Hello boys, hello girls. Today we're talking about narrative tests, tá? É, short stories, novels, etc. É lá do nosso capítulo 19. Vamos ver alguma coisinha dele? Vamos ver do que, que fala? Então, narrative tests tell a story to entertain the reader. Uh, they have a setting, a time and place, some characters, people, animals or objects, a plot, events that happen in order. There are many types of narrative tests, such as a picture books, short stories and fairy tales. Então, vamos assistir este vídeo para a gente começar assim bem tranquilos, tá bom? Beauty and the Beast Once there lived a merchant with his three daughters Well, dear daughters, I'm off to the market What would you like me to bring for you? Oh, father, please bring me a beautiful dress And I would like a lovely pearl necklace And what can I bring for you, Beauty, my child? Father... I would be very happy if you could bring me a beautiful red rose. So the merchant set off for the market. And after finishing his business, he bought the dress and necklace for his two daughters. Ah, oh, well, I've finished my business and shopping. It's time to head back home. It's getting late, so I'll pluck the red rose for beauty on the way. The merchant was halfway home when suddenly there was a loud clap of thunder with lightning, and it started raining heavily. What awful weather! How am I going to reach home in this fierce storm? I can't even see any sign of shelter. Suddenly, the merchant saw a bright light, and going on near, he saw a beautiful castle. No one seemed to be around, so the merchant went inside. Oh my! My! A castle in the middle of the woods. And what a fine spread on the table. Yoo-hoo! Yoo-hoo! Anyone there? Strange. No one seems to be around. Oh well, I hope the owner won't mind if I help myself to some food. The merchant ate a hearty meal and then went to find a place to rest. This is indeed a beautiful castle. And the bed there looks so inviting. Just what I need. The merchant was very tired and fell into a deep sleep, waking only when the sun peeked in through the windows. Ah, oh, that was a good sleep. The weather seems fine now. I'll have a quick wash and make my way back home. Ooh, I can smell some heavenly breakfast. Once again, a very fine meal was laid on the table. The merchant had his fill and was now ready to leave. I wish I could meet the owner of this castle to thank him, but can't see anyone around. Well, I guess I'd better be on my way. So saying, the merchant made his way to his horse, and was pleased to note that his horse had also been given fresh hay. Just as he was about to mount his horse, he saw a bush with beautiful red roses, and remembered his daughter's wish. But as he plucked the rose, a horrible-looking beast dressed in royal finery glared at him from behind the bush, with eyes blazing. You're an ungrateful man. I gave you food to eat and my bed to sleep. And this is how you repay me? By stealing my beautiful flowers? You shall be killed for this. Oh, sir, I'm very, very sorry. I didn't mean to steal. My youngest daughter, Beauty, had asked me to bring her a rose flower, and I was taking it for her. Well, I will let you go on one condition. Anything, sir. I will do anything. When you go back, you will send your daughter, Beauty, to live with me here in my castle. What? Oh, sir. You can leave only if you agree to my condition. The merchant had no choice but to agree to the beast's condition. With a heavy heart, he left the beast's castle and returned home. Oh, father, I love 
love this dress. I can't wait to try it on. This pearl necklace is just beautiful. I'm sure my friends will be so envious. Thank you for this beautiful rose, Father. But why do I get the feeling that something is worrying you? Oh, my dear, dear beauty. Unlike your sisters, you know me so well. I really don't know how to tell you. You can tell me anything, Father. I just don't want to see you troubled like this. The merchant then told Beauty all that had happened and the promise he had made to the beast. My dear, I don't want you worrying your pretty head about it. I'll figure something out. No, Father. You have given your word. It is because of my rose that this happened, so I will go to the beast. With a heavy heart, the merchant went out and left his precious daughter at the beast's castle. Beauty was at first terrified on seeing the beast, but the beast was so gentle and kind to her that slowly Beauty lost her fear of him. The beast is very ugly, in fact, quite frightening to look at. But he has treated me so well. He is indeed a noble soul. So life went on. Beauty spent her days in the beautiful gardens of the palace, and the evening she would sit in front of the fireplace doing embroidery. The beast sat near her, happy just observing her. However, one day things changed. Beauty, I've been wanting to ask you something for a very long time. Will you be my bride? Beauty was shocked. She had got used to the beast around her, but marriage? She could not even think of marrying such an ugly creature. Um, I do like you a lot, sir, but the thought of marriage has never entered my head. Oh, it's all right. I'm not offended by your answer. No more was said, and life continued as usual. However, the beast understood that Beauty was missing her family. And one day, he gave her a magic mirror. Oh, my dear. I know you are missing your father and sisters. Come, have a look in this mirror. Beauty could not believe her eyes. There in the mirror, she could see her father and sisters so clearly, though they were so far away. Oh, sir, you are too kind. I don't know how to thank you. One day, when Beauty went to the magic mirror, she was shocked to see her father ill and in bed. She ran up to the beast. Sir, I just saw my father in the magic mirror. He is ill and remembering me. Can you please, please let me go and visit him? The beast was very angry and stomped out of the room. However, when he saw how sad Beauty was, he went up to her. <sighs> All right, Beauty. I'll let you go to your father, but on one condition. You have to return to the castle in one week. I promise, I promise I will come back. You have been so kind to me. I cannot even think of breaking my promise. And so Beauty went to visit her sick father. My child, my child. Oh, how I've missed you. I cannot forgive myself for the situation I have put you in. No, no, father. You must not blame yourself and make yourself ill. The beast has been extremely kind to me. And even though I miss you and my dear sisters, I can see you every day through a magical mirror that the beast has given me. With his precious daughter with him again, the merchant became well very soon. Beauty was so happy to be with her family again, and she completely forgot about the promise she had made to the beast. And one night, she had a horrible dream. She saw the beast calling out her name. He seemed to be in a lot of pain and was begging Beauty to return to him. Oh, how could I have forgotten the promise I made to the beast? He has been so good to me, looked after me so well. I have been so happy with my own family that I completely forgot about him. Beauty rushed to her father's room. Father, father! What's the matter, my child? What's happened? Are you not well? I must leave immediately, father. 
I saw the beast in my dream. He was pleading with me to return and seemed to be in a lot of pain. I must hurry, father. If anything happens to the beast, I shall never be able to forgive myself. Yes, dear, you must go back. But why don't you wait until morning? No, father. I must not delay for a minute. The beast needs me and I must go to him immediately. So saying, Beauty quickly got ready and ran to her horse and was soon on her way to the beast's castle. When she reached, she could not see the beast anywhere. I hope I am not late. I couldn't bear it if anything happened to the beast. After being away from him, I now realize how good he was. Oh, where do I look for him? Suddenly, Beauty heard a groaning sound from the garden. Well. She ran there, and among his beautiful rose bushes lay the beast. She then sat down near the beast, and tears started flowing down her cheeks. I am so sorry that I broke my promise. I didn't mean to. I really didn't. Please, don't leave me. I... I want to marry you. I really do. Suddenly, a miracle happened before Beauty's astonished eyes. As soon as she uttered the words, the beast began to transform into a handsome young man. What is happening? Who are you? Beauty, I am actually a prince. The prince of this castle. An evil witch had cast a spell on me. She changed me into this beast that you saw me as. Only if someone agreed to marry me the way that I was, would the spell be broken. I fell in love with you as soon as I saw you, and I now know that you are a lovely person also. I was afraid to let you go in case you did not come back. Beauty, will you marry me? I feel I am in a dream. Is this really happening? This is no dream, my darling. I am a prince. And now you are going to become my beloved princess. Come, let's go and tell your father. I am sure he was very sad that you had to stay here. But now, but now when he knows the truth, he would no doubt be very happy for us. Beauty and her prince led a long, happy, and loving life. Puss was very sad to see his master so depressed and went and gently rubbed Jack's cheek with his paw. Do not despair, dear master. I know you think I am good for nothing. E aí, pessoal, gostaram da história? Legal, né? Mais importante que você tenha entendido. E assim, pessoal, que a gente termina a parte 1 do nosso vídeo. Já já eu volto, tá bom? Até já.